Okay, so who is to blame for the slowing or potentially slowing uptake of EV car sales in the UK? The government's new regulations state that EV manufacturers are being or will be charged um, for every car they sell that is not an EV or meets their EV target. Manufacturers are saying that they don't have enough resource or they've not had enough time. So this week, Sky News uh, had an article and I thought we can watch this article and let's dissect it. Peter Ian Plummer, he's Commercial Director at Auto Trader and joins us this morning. Ian, very good morning to you. What are the concerns within the auto industry about these targets? Just talk us through them. It's a bit complicated, isn't it? But essentially, there is a sense that the motor industry is not going to, to meet the targets this year, and that means financial penalties, doesn't it? So, if they don't meet their targets, which are increasing every year of EV sales, then they get penalised, they, um, they get a penalty, and they're not small penalties either. Well, the, the targets are very tough. Um, each manufacturer is expected to achieve 22% of their sales as, as battery electric by uh, the, the end of this year. That then ramps up to 28% next year and goes all the way up to 80% in 2030. So they've got until 2030, but the, their targets are increasing each and every year to try and entice more people to take EV cars. Okay, so we've got that. Um, and having had the recent government announcement in the budget that we will be ending sales of petrol and diesel cars after 2030. It'll presumably only be a battery electric or plug-in hybrids we can sell through 2035. Really. Then again, plug-in hybrids end. So plug-in hybrids, uh, in case you don't know, um, in a full EV car means it's got no combustion engine, it is all electrical powered. A hybrid or plug-in hybrid has got both. So it has a smaller EV battery, so they can plug that in and it can run locally on, on the battery. Or there is a fuel tank as well, so for those longer journeys, you can use the fuel. Now, the issue with plug-in hybrids, and I found this from asking friends who've got one, they're not really using the EV part, they're not using the battery. They're just using the petrol car. So, as far as CO2 is concerned, and environmental concerns what's the point for an ev around town it's fantastic but they can't be bothered to charge it and they don't there's no incentive to just run on petrol so there's a journey if you like all the way through to 2035 but on that journey if you don't hit your respective numbers 22 percent this year rises 28 next year then you pay a fine of fifteen thousand pounds for every car sort of beyond the target that didn't get there. So that can add up to millions of pounds of fines for a particular manufacturer. £15,000 per car. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of incentive to get your sales up. But why are they not going up? £15,000. Currently in the UK, the overall market is running at 18% of battery electric. Now, some brands are pure electric, Tesla, for example. So uh, other brands you can imagine are quite significantly below that 22%. There are some flexibilities within the system already. So there are some uh, abilities to catch back what you don't do this year, but you pay a sort of interest on what you don't do this year if you catch it back next year. Um, you can buy credits from a, a competitor such as, let's say, Tesla. who's already made... Okay, so you can buy credits. So you've got a manufacturer that is purely um, building electric cars, BYD, Tesla. Um, they're smashing it out of the park, okay? You're a company that has struggled with EV, didn't know which path to take, couldn't be bothered, assumed it was a bit of a fad, so you're a bit slow on the uptake and the design of EV cars. You can now buy credits from the manufacturers who actually took the chance and actually built the EV cars. You can buy credits off them to reduce your charge per car that you've sold that isn't an EV. I don't like that. I don't get that. Um, it's like the, this carbon offsetting of we're going to have an airline. We're going to send people around the world on an airline. 
but we are going to plant a tree. Brilliant. What is that tree going to do in the next 20, 30 years before it's mature enough to actually make a difference? HS2, they cut down thousands of trees, some of them over 250 years old. And what do they do? Well, plant a new tree. Brilliant. Doesn't really work that way, does it? That tree has to mature before it has any difference. So buying these credits is kind of a way of admitting we didn't do anything, but we'll just buy a credit of somebody else and let them do all the hard work. A lot of money in that field in various markets where that kind of mechanism exists. But in essence, it is a very hefty stick to encourage the industry to get the consumer on this journey. And what we can see is the consumer wants to buy electric, but there is a challenge in getting enough of them on this journey. That's why we've launched a program today to try and create more certainty and, and, uh, and clarity in the mind of the consumer on that journey to 2035. And, and why, I suppose the question is, why are these manufacturers not meeting those targets? Is it consumer uh, demand or is it a problem with supply chains, a lack of desire? Why is it? Um, firstly, uh, design though. I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to dry a, a whole host of EVs that are on the market um, in my position and every single one has been fantastic to drive. Smooth, uh, quiet, uh, accelerating very well, etc. The technology in them is amazing as well. So I, I, I challenge anybody to get inside an EV and not enjoy the drive. Okay, so everybody that I have introduced to my EV um, and I've driven it or have been a passenger in it, have loved it. They love the quietness, they love the acceleration of it, the simplicity of it, the technical advances in it. All of them have said, actually, I really like this car. I like an EV. Okay. So the customer demand as far as want is, is definitely there. The vast majority of people, as many as nine in 10, in most surveys say that they would never go back once they've had an EV. So it's not the, the ownership experience. The buying experience is expensive. There have been issues of range and charge that have gone in the way. The charging industry has really got behind that challenge though. And there are more than 70,000 charges in the, uh, in the UK now, public charges. Okay. So yeah, over 70,000 public charges in the UK, only 7,000 petrol stations in the UK now. I did do a video of this. Um, I put it at the top so you can go and watch that later. I put it in the description as well. Um, Range anxiety, again, something that I've covered on this channel before, talking about range anxiety, the fear of running out of electrical charge, and how to get around that. Um, the upfront cost of an EV is expensive. There's no denying that. That's if you're buying outright. The way the country is going now, most people seem to be having them on short-term leases, two, three, four, five years maybe which actually brings the cost right down. It's like the renting of a house. You never own it, but you've got somewhere to live. Many people can charge at home. Around two thirds of people could have a home charge. If they do, that removes an awful lot of the charging issues. And uh, you know, then they will get a, a lower cost of running their vehicle than they would do if they've got a petrol car. So that again is another argument that um, people who are against EVs and the comments in my channel absolutely ring true of this. We all can't charge at home and, and, and that's fine. You can't all charge at home. People can't. Okay. Um, depends on where you live, but if you're lucky enough to have a driveway, then yeah, you can charge at home. Again, another video I've done is comparing the cost of, um, charging at home versus charging, uh, when you're on the move. Now, this is something that the government needs to look at and the government needs to tackle is the extortionate amount that we are being charged for public charging, which is more than the price of a litre of petrol. And yet it's coming from a renewable source. The, um, you know, the, the sun, the solar, the nuclear, whatever, wherever this energy is coming from, is renewable. And yet we're being charged more than petrol and diesel, which is being extracted from the ground thousands and thousands of miles offshore, potentially, loaded onto a dirty ship container, imported in, refined, transported around the company, the country in diesel trucks, 
and then put into your petrol car and your diesel car. And yet the renewable energy, which we're all told we should be using, is being charged at a ridiculous price. The starting price of the car, though, remains a problem. Now, to your point about whether that's a demand issue, I'd challenge that it's probably a, a reflection of the demand at a given price. In other words, a new electric is around 30% more expensive than its petrol equivalent. Therefore, it slows the demand. When they're priced more aggressively, and in used cars, they're now a parity to their, their petrol equivalents, they sell extremely well. They're the fastest selling uh, segment on our site, in fact. Okay, so secondhand market for EV cars is fantastic. If you're looking for one, it's brilliant. A lot of the FUD out there says, uh, you know, they, they say, oh, you don't want to buy a secondhand EV car because you probably end up having to replace the battery in it because it's done more than 5,000 miles or whatever. Uh, complete rubbish. Okay. Most EV cars now, the batteries are well designed. They are designed to last for 10 to 20 years, over 100,000 miles on the car. Um, you will pick up a cheaper or equivalently priced petrol car, uh, sorry, EV car than a petrol car, uh, with that benefit of the battery is going to last. Okay. Especially if you're not a big mileage user. If you're somebody like the old-fashioned reps going up and down the motorways every day, then yeah, maybe the EV is not for you. But for most people who do short commutes, it's fantastic. And that second-hand battery is basically brand new. And just very finally, Ian, I mean, are you in favour of these targets? Do you think they're fair or do you think the government actually does need to give some grounds? Well, I think the industry recognises the, the need to work towards uh, a, a, a clean transport system, a sustainable mo mo mobility, I beg your pardon, is uh, an, an ambition that I think everybody in the industry subscribes to, and we certainly do. Um, the, the route of direct, you know, the route we're on, the direction of travel is therefore not a, de a debate. I think there is a debate around the incentivization. I've talked about the stick. There could be potentially more carrots to help the consumer get there. In many other markets, consumers have received other incentives to go with the stick that the industry has right now, okay. the competition would probably be useful. Okay, uh, Ian uh, from Auto Traders, thank you very much indeed uh, for uh, joining. Okay, so there you have it. Um, Auto Trader themselves are saying that the EV market is there, there is a demand for it, but the cost of initial ownership is probably what's holding people back. So, in the comments below, please comment if you would have an EV car if the price was comparative to that of a petrol equivalent. Um, and the prices are coming down as well, especially as more uh, less mainstream brands um, like BYD again and MG are really pushing their EV cars onto the market. So please give me a comment. Tell me if you would buy an EV car if the price was the same between a petrol car and an EV car. Again, go and have a look at the video about the price comparison, which one's cheaper to run. You might be surprised and by how much. Um, and if this video was of interest to you, please like and subscribe. Help me grow this channel. Until next time, thank you very much.